Hello there Quirky Birders. In this video I'm just going to do a um, quick painting using the three primary colours. So I'm going to be using red, yellow and blue. Now this is the painting that we're going to be doing. Um, I've got my palettes all ready. And it's a little lighthouse. And I'm going to be using the broad flat brush that uh, we talked about during yesterday's tutorial. I'm going to take you back to working wet on wet. So you're just going to be applying water to the um, sky part of your painting. And I'm just using a very, very loose and fluid technique while I apply the water to the paper. It doesn't matter if you leave some bits of white without um, any water on because that's just going to change the pigment or you could even leave it white um, to um, simulate some clouds. So just cover the back of your lighthouse design, just using clean water and your flat brush. And once you've done that, you're then ready to apply the paint. Now we're just going to be using the blue paint for the sky. So sticking with your primary colours, we're just going to be lightly washing the paper with the blue watercolour. Just take some time and just pay particular attention that you don't um, get the blue into your lighthouse. And this is a great um, little exercise and process um, for you to um, be mindful with your brush your paint and like I say you're also working for this on this part of the picture in the wet on wet technique. So you can just take some time and just fill in the sky details and um, think about how a sky looks it's got different textures different depths of colour so you can ha really have some fun um, playing around with the pigment and the um, colour density um, as you're applying the wash to the back of your, your painting. This... Don't worry if, like we've this just happened there for me, that the paint has actually um, puddled and pooled a bit. You can then use just a dry brush just to... Uh, to knock it back but I was absolutely I was quite happy with the, with how that paint responded to uh, to the water so I've, I've left it so just continually work the color into the water and then just soften it off with your flat brush just to get rid of any harsh lines. Can you see? We've got a lovely different textures that just uh, simulate the sky. So I just went round my lighthouse just to um, reduce the brush marks because I didn't really want anything um, too obvious so just using a brush that was uh, soaked in a little bit of water I did take the excess off I just went back around the design just to make sure it was clear so going back to your primary colors we're now going to be working with the base of the lighthouse so I need you to mix up a green and if you remember from working with the color wheel you actually mix a green from using the blue and the yellow and you can have some fun on your palette um, to create different um, densities, different vibrancies of, of greens, um, because this design works well by having a number of different colours in the foreground. So once you've mixed your green, you can then start applying the paint to your picture. Now you're going to be applying the green, just going straight onto the dry paper. You're not going to be working wet on wet, 
But what is nice in this segment of the painting is that you actually practice your washes and, and practice your, um, your colours. Now I've left this in the video because I did actually make a mistake and I managed to pick up some red. Now if you make a mistake like this, just don't panic, just work quickly and using a little rag you can actually take up most of the paint but you have to work quickly and as you can see I've actually managed to get the majority of the paint up so I can go back over it with the green and, uh, and nobody will be any of the wiser that uh, there was a spot of red there. So working with different densities of greens, practice with your, your pigmentation, practice with the amount of water that you mix with the colours and just have some fun using the different colours um, to create um, the landscape that the, uh, the lighthouse is sitting upon. Now I've actually changed my brush for this section. I'm actually just using my little round brush rather than using the flat brush and I've just got a little bit more control using my round brush for this part of the picture. So working methodically just apply the different colours, have some fun with the way that the paint is moving around on the paper. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make up a brown colour. So I'm using my red and I'm also using the opposite colour on the colour wheel which is the green. And as I said on my colour wheel video, these two sort of do cancel one another out and can become quite grey and quite muddy looking, which is perfect really for the colour that I'm trying to achieve here. Just want it a little bit darker, so I'm going to add in some blue but that will give me a lovely brown colour for me to use for the, the rocks in the foreground of the picture. Now again, using this brown, you can work with different um, levels of water and you can create different vibrancies and different densities according with, with the colour. So just being very loose just put in the details of the rocks. You don't need to be very particular with this design. It's, it's all still fairly abstract and fairly quirky. Um, so you're just suggesting that there are rocks in the foreground. Um, you don't really need any level of realism. And then from here you can then continue to just add in a few more details with the green, just adding a little bit darker, more denser colour of the green. And just put a little bit of shading just around the base of your lighthouse. And you can see from the colours, it's all very sort of naturals with the greens and the browns, but all different tones just made up from the primary colours. So we're now going to work on the lighthouse itself and we're going to be using the paper and leaving that without paint to create the white. So just using some of the red, I'm just going to put in the red around the central band of the lighthouse. Now you're not going wet on wet and you really do want quite a nice strong colour on this. So make sure that you've got quite a, a, a good uh, amount of paint on your brush and not too much water. And that will give you the lovely dark dense colour red. So 
So from the middle band of the lighthouse, then working upwards, I'm then going to be just using the same red in just on the uh, base of the light. Now, a word of warning is when you're doing this, just make sure your sky is dry um, before you then proceed to put in the red details of your lighthouse um, because you don't want to get this far and then find that the red actually bleeds into the blue of the sky. And then the final bit of red in the design is just the top of the lighthouse. Again, I'm still working with the um, round headed brush. And a design like this really does help you with your brush control because you, um, you, you're filling in spaces, you're using a broader pressure on your brush to fill in those spaces, but you're also using the tip of the brush for the line. So. Um, just have some fun um, with regards to how you're working your brush. So I've swapped my brushes now and I've gone back to my flat brush and I'm using my flat brush to create the C. Now on my palette I've got some blue, I've got the remainders of the green so I'm going to mix them together to get um, a sort of a bluey green and just to bring it up a little bit to give it a, a little bit more um, sort of aquamarine colour, I've then added in the yellow. So at no point am I using any additional colours. I am just using the colours that are coming from this picture are all your primary colours. So they're just red, yellow and the blue. So once you've mixed one colour with your sort of greeny blue you can then just use that to knock back the main blue so you've got a really nice sort of lovely sea colour both contrasting colours which look really nice together so using the flat brush just use some nice broad strokes so this comes back to your um your practice your brush practice that you did yesterday so using some nice broad strokes just put in the detail on the C. Again, being careful that you don't go over the lines of your lighthouse because you don't particularly want any blue on the lovely white of your lighthouse. Now I'm just working the rest of the paint. I haven't applied any water to my brush. I'm just working the rest of the paint using the dry brush just to give it a nice little bit of texture. The next step is to just put some water on your brush and just to go back over the paint just to um, reduce any severe brush marks. You do want some um, variety of, of colour and a little bit of texture there but you don't particularly want to see any um, additional broad brush strokes. Changing the colour of the paint to this aquamarine colour and also changing the way that I hold the brush, I'm now just going to stipple um, using the end of the brush. I'm just going to stipple the different um, sort of bluey green through the sea. And all I'm doing is just loading the end of the brush, not fully with the paint, and then I'm just dabbing the brush on the paper just to create a little bit of variety and depth of colour. So you can continue to work, you don't need to keep reloading your brush, you can actually just develop the colour from the paint that's on the paper. So just pay particular attention to around the shoreline.
And then another good tip is to actually continue to stipple without any paint on your brush um, because that lifts the paint slightly um, and that will uh, make the paint a little bit thinner and reveal some of the paper. So you end up with sort of the blues and the greens uh, and some of the whites um, of, the, of the sea. So just take some time to work some texture through um, your C. It's very, very simple to do and really quite effective. And you can certainly see the difference there that we've, we've got some nice colour and texture through the C. So now I'm just going to add in some shading and remember we talked about red and green being opposite colours on the colour wheel and when you mix together opposite colours on the colour wheel they become quite a muddy colour and that's exactly what I need, a muddy grey colour now. So mixing the red and green together, water it down and you will create a really nice sort of grey um, colour that you would be able to use for some shading on the side of your lighthouse. I'm just using my little round headed brush on this one and just using the tip just to create that little bit of shading. Don't worry if the paint is too wet and you feel that it's too watery, just dry your brush off and then just suck up the excess paint and that will give you a nice little shaded effect. So I'm just working down one side of the lighthouse. Again, just being very loose in the way that I hold my brush. My, I'm not holding my brush too close to the bristles. So I've got some um, nice movement in my brush. And then for the light itself, I'm actually using a darker grey that I've mixed. So it doesn't have so much water to it, um, but it still moves nicely on the paper and that just creates the, uh, the grey of the light on the lighthouse. Now that's it. You just need to allow your painting to dry. And then once it's dry, we can start adding the ink details, which is uh, the usual style of painting that uh, we're currently doing with Quirky Birds at the moment. So again, I'm just using my black fine liner pen. And I'm just going over the lines of my drawing. Now, a word of, of caution, the lines of my drawing are actually a little bit bolder and I do do them bolder so you can, they, they're picked up on the camera. So obviously when it comes to you having a go at this painting, you don't have to be so bold with your, with your, pen li with your pencil lines. Now at this stage I have actually taken off the masking tape that was holding my painting to the board. And that's because when I'm, I'm doing any of these uh, ink details, I find it much easier to move the paper around the board. So I've just turned um, my piece of work upside down just so I can put in the, uh, the details of the of the light just moving towards the top of the lighthouse. Just putting in a couple of lines on the glass of the lighthouse just to, uh, to give that suggestion that uh, it is a working light. Thank you. 
and the same with regards to the little windows up the tower of the lighthouse just put in a little bit of black shading off your pen put in the horizon line and then for the sea all you're going to be doing is just um, putting in your coastline just to give that a little bit of definition and also just to define your rock somewhat so just put in some little lines to make them look like little boulders you can then work some additional texture through your rocks you can just put some little squiggles and dots and circles just to uh, give the suggestion of, of sort of pebbles and come out, coming over to the sea you're just literally going to just be scribbling just put some little scribbles to um to to give the suggestion of waves and then just scribble all over the sea. So just back down to the rocks, I've just put in a few more little details just to make it a little bit more prominent. And then I thought I'd just put some little seagulls in using my pen. So all I'm doing is a little dot and then two little dash marks either side of my dot just to give the um, effect of, of little birds flying in the sky. So I'm just putting five little birds in. And then at this bottom corner, I'm just then going to be putting in some um, little grasses, little um, grasses that have been growing on the dunes. So all I'm doing is just some little line pen marks. Just in the bottom corner. And then to give the impression of little seed heads on the tops of the grasses, I'm just putting in a series of little, little dots. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, it's amazing what you can produce with just three colours and two brushes. Um, like I say, it's a fantastic exercise, um, it, well you end up with a, a finished piece, but it's a fantastic exercise just using um, the primary colours um, and just the, the different techniques um, from the washes um, through the shading, that type of thing. So have some fun and I look forward to seeing the results. Goodbye.